human correlation, the threshold, and the introduction to global VAR. That's right. Yep. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is to start with the framework selection that I usually do. Yes. So the panel data selection that I like to perform always is based on this scheme. Yes. So there are characteristics of the panel data, right? You guys can see my screen right now. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. So according to the structure of the data, regarding to the panel data, we might classify them according to the periods of time and the number of cross-sectional units. So we might have different kind of structures, yes. We might have large panels composed by periods of time that are bigger to 25, a number of cross-sections bigger to 25, maybe a period of time lesser than 25, but with a higher number of individuals, we might have the small panels, which consist of a high number of time periods and a small number of cross-sectional units, and small really panels, which refers just to small numbers of time periods and a small number of cross-sectional units. So during this kind of selection, when you're dealing with the panel data, you must classify it in order to treat it, right? There are no consensus regarding of what is understood as a, as a large panel or a very small panel. The classification usually differs from authors, all right? But there is a couple of things that you need to keep in mind regarding to how to handle the, the data. First of all, if you have a higher number of time periods of time, you should always consider the problems of the time series analysis. And what is the usual problem of time series analysis? That is autocorrelation, that is dynamic relationships, that could be integration, and that's it. If, when you don't have a sufficient or a higher number of time periods, uh, sometimes the authors just propose to treat the panel data as a cross-section. Yes. So in this case, the common correlation effects have something really special, yes, because it works on large scale panel data. So cross-sectional dependency is related to the common correlation effect, yes. I assume that mm, none of you have seen the uh, common correlation effect, the simple common correlation effect. That's right. or any one of you or, 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 or all of you have seen already the common correlation? I'm unfamiliar, unfamiliar with that. All right, all right. So, all right, in order to present the topic of dynamic common correlation, we need to first see the topic of simple common correlation, right? Because the the name of the topic in the advanced panel data training is called the dynamic common correlation, right? So the common correlation starts to handle right here where we have a higher number of periods of time and a higher number of cross-sectional units. And we might start to work with something that it's called the cross-sectional dependency, right? So cross-sectional dependency is a way to test the common effects in a panel data right? If there is no cross-sectional dependency, we might rely on first generation of panel unit root tests, right? But if it exists some sort of cross-sectional dependency, then we need to rely on the second generation of panel unit roots, all right? I will share with you all of the materials that I will present in this. So please remind me at the end of the session, 